Why do things stick? It's an interesting uh, scientific problem. One simple example that's quite intuitive uh, is to look at a piece of Velcro. Um, and you all know if you take a piece of Velcro and pull two ends, it comes apart. But why does it stick in the first place? One simple idea would be you've got hooks on here and eyes on here. When you push them together, the hooks and eyes link together. When we talk about molecules sticking to surfaces, which is something I'm interested in, it's a similar sort of mechanism. Although we don't use hooks and eyes, we use chemical bonds or interactions between different parts of molecules. One example of, why th of things that stick is chewing gum, and it's one thing that's fascinated me for quite a long time, in fact, for nearly 10 years. And it's a topic uh, that people are interested in at the moment because of the problems involving in, involved in chewing gum pollution. For example, the cost of removing chewing gum from paving stones is immense. But why does chewing gum stick and why is it particularly difficult to remove it? Well, here we have a piece of chewing gum and this shows you the problem in a nutshell. So I'll just take a piece of it and try and pull it off. And you see what happens is you don't really remove it. What you do is stretch it. And all the energy you're putting into removing it is actually stretching it and not breaking the bonds with the surface. So if we want to develop a new chewing gum that doesn't stick, we've got to fundamentally answer the question, how do we balance the energy required to stretch with the energy required to remove it from the interface? So why are we concerned about uh, chewing gum pollution, chewing gum sticking to our paving stones? Well, it's unsightly, it's unpleasant, and as most of you will know, chewing gum sticks to virtually everything. Um, if you've had it in your hair, uh, or stuck under your fingernails, stuck to your clothes, it's a very unpleasant thing. Of course, it's not life-threatening, and it doesn't mean the end of the world as we know it, but the cost of removing chewing gum is significant. Just in the borough of Westminster in London, it costs £98,000 a year just to remove it. And the removal methods are really very ineffective. You've probably seen these machines where you can either blow steam onto chewing gum and try and remove it that way with a pressure jet, or maybe freezing it with liquid nitrogen and you crack it, you crack the paving stone as well. These methods are really not very effective, and in fact, Westminster Council have found the best way to do it is just to get a scraper and scrape it off by hand, extremely labour intensive. So the problem lies in what's in chewing gum and why it sticks. And our approach is to do something a little different. The approach we have at Revolima, a spin-out company from the University of Bristol, um, is to develop some new ingredients for chewing gum, to replace some of the ingredients that cause it to stick. And also, uh, it turns out these new innovations will improve other characteristics of chewing gum. For example, retention of flavour and uh, chewability and other, other aspects. And so it won't just improve uh, our pollution problem, it actually improve the product as well. We have a very, very simple idea. And that is, we add a new component which is sensitive to moisture. What that means is that when you put the chewing gum in your mouth initially, uh, your saliva acts uh, to soften the gum. Normal gum is softened by temperature, but the revolume gum is also softened by the action of saliva. What that means is that when you eject it and it dries out, and obviously under some circumstances it will dry, some it won't, uh, then it becomes hard again. And if it's hard, it won't stick. You may say, OK, uh, if we talk about England, where it rains virtually every day, then we've got to deal with the situation when it's wet as well. Well, it turns out that when our chewing gum is wet, it doesn't stick either. It has a certain surfactant quality, uh, which means it can be easily removed, um, either just with water or with a mild surfactant solution. So imagine you've got chewing gum in your hair, you can wash it out with shampoo. And that's the innovation we have. So the, the ingredient that we added to chewing gum is a polymeric material and it's an unusual material, it's rather schizophrenic. Parts of it like to be in water, parts of it like to be in oil. And so it dissolves in, in water to an extent and it dissolves in oil to an extent. And one property it has, it sits at an interface. And so we can use it, for example, to stabilise an emulsion. That's a very common application of these sorts of materials. But we have some other ideas. One interesting follow-on from the chewing gum project is that we now understand why, how we can prevent things sticking or how we can easily remove them. So that means we can use our same technology to prevent things sticking. So for example, I could coat this surface with our polymer and then normal chewing gum won't stick to it. It turns out that the polymer is also bacteriophobic. That means if I'm a bacteria, I won't stick to the surface. And you can imagine there'll be lots of examples where that could be used. For example, in surgeon's gloves, we can make them so bacteria don't stick to them. We can use it in wound dressings. We can use it to coat all sorts of implements in hospitals. So there's a wide range of materials that, uh, that can be coated and used in this way. Another seemingly totally unrelated application 
is to use it in detergents. The most effective detergents are actually solids. And unfortunately, when you put these solids into liquid, uh, they immediately react and you get the detergent action. A lot of people like liquid detergents. And so we have a clever idea working with a company in England called Warwick International, where we're going to use our technology so that we can, we can put conventional bleach additives, which are solids, uh, into liquid formulations. And so another nice example of how we can use the revolumer technology.